So, Povel. I'm sure you've probably seen it before, or at least heard of it. Have you ever wondered how it works? How does a five to six foot human fling themselves 20 foot in the air with a giant stick? Well, the answer actually isn't as complicated as you might think. It's all the transfer of energy. See, as the Volta runs down the runway, he picks up speed, gaining kinetic energy. Then, as he plants the pole in the box, he transfers all that kinetic energy into the pole, which then releases it, sending the vaulter over the bar. However, kinetic energy isn't the only form of energy going into the vault. There's also work done by the vaulter on the pole. Let's take a look at some calculations. This is the vault we'll be using for our analysis. The displacement from the cone to my takeoff is 8.5 feet, or 2.59 meters, and I pass through at 0.37 seconds. This means my velocity is 7 meters per second. The final height of the jump is marked by the bungee at 14 feet, or 4.72 meters, and my mass is 61.69 kilograms. Okay, so we know the equation of the vault. It's given by the kinetic energy plus the work done by the vaulter on the pole equals the potential energy. So the kinetic energy is really affected by the velocity, and the potential energy is what energy we have at the final height. So we can solve for both of these. We don't know the work. So to really see the comparison here, to see which of these has a greater effect on the final height, or the potential energy, we need to solve for the work. So we can do that by saying work equals the potential energy minus the kinetic energy. And once we find the work, then we can see whether the work done on the vaulter or the kinetic energy affected by this velocity, which one of these has the greatest effect on the final height or the final energy at the top of the jump. So first we'll solve for the potential energy. Potential energy equals mgh. We know my mass 61.69 kilograms. Gravity equals 9.81 meters per second. And the height at the top of the jump is 14 feet. But remember, in the potential energy equation, this height represents the change in height of the center of mass of the object. So my center of mass is actually 3 feet off the ground already. So really, it's displaced only 11 feet, because you have to subtract my center of mass, because it's already three feet off the ground. So 11 feet, that's also equal to 3.352 meters. We need meters. And we can solve for potential energy now. It equals 61.69 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second times 3.352 meters. That's going to give you 2,130.23 joules of energy. So this represents the amount of energy that I got out of the pole vault, that I got out of my jump, because at the final height, this is the potential energy that I have. So somehow I had to get that energy, and that's by the kinetic energy and the work. Kinetic energy by the velocity and the work done on the pole. So let's solve for the kinetic energy now, because that equals 1 half mv squared. Again, mass 61.69 kilograms. The velocity is 7 meters per second. And let's solve. Kinetic energy is equal to 1 half times 61.69 kilograms times 7 meters per second. And that's going to equal oops, squared, that's going to equal 1,511.4 joules of energy. So wow, yeah, that's, that's already a lot of the energy. There, so you can see that's, that's, that's 70% already. So let's go back up here, solve for the work. So again, work equals the potential energy minus the kinetic energy. We can get that. 
2,130.23 joules minus 1,511.4 joules work equals 618.83 joules of energy. So in comparison to the kinetic energy, I really didn't have to do much work. It's really the kinetic energy that affects the jump. So this is only 30%. And this is 70%. So as you can see, there is work done by the vaulter. But in comparison to the kinetic energy, it's really not that much. So since kinetic energy is affected by the square of the velocity, that means that speed really has the most effect on the jump. So as my coach always says, speed is the key to the kingdom.